Coming up next, after two decades on death row, convicted child killer David Westerfield has been moved to a general population prison. Neighbors concerned about multiple ADUs in the middle of their neighborhood. I spoke to developers say it's a critical need to address the housing crisis. Like everything else these days, the cost of summer camp has gone up, but there could be ways to make it more affordable. I'm Shannon Handy working for you on that story coming up. One night only, Billy Joel and Sting, downtown San Diego. Everything you need to know, coming up. Preston Kale and his performance at a Padre game that you have to see. CBS 8 News, live at 6, starts right now. David Westerfield, one of the most notorious child killers in San Diego history, has been transferred off of death row in San Quentin. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. And I'm Kirsten Holmes in for Marcella Lee. Westerfield's death sentence remains in place for the 2002 murder of seven-year-old Danielle Van Dam. But as CBS 8's David Gottfriedson reports, he's now being housed at a general population prison in Northern California. We have adjourned the above entitled cause determine that the penalty shall be death. When a jury found David Westerfield guilty of kidnapping and murdering seven-year-old Daniel Van Dam in 2002, crowds cheered outside the downtown courthouse. There was a, a, an enormous expression of relief and celebration that justice had been done. That was former San Diego District Attorney Paul Finkst speaking to me two years ago. I called him today to get his reaction to the news that David Westerfield has been transferred from death row in San Quentin to the High Desert State Prison in Susanville, California. It's hard to conceive of a crime more egregious than going into someone's house at night while they're sleeping, snatching their child from her bed, taking her, sexually abusing her, killing her, and dumping her body on the side of the road. His crime was egregious beyond discussion, but California does not execute people. Now they don't even house people for execution because they're not even going to pretend that he's going to be executed. Westerfield was transferred on March 12th to the general population prison in Northern California as part of the state's condemned inmate transfer program. The condemned inmate transfer program is basically a program that allows the condemned population to be transferred to these other prisons so that they can participate in additional rehabilitative programming and also take advantage of paying back restitution to some of their victims. The Department of Corrections says it's cheaper to house condemned inmates in other prisons because they will not have to be handcuffed and escorted whenever they are walking, as currently required at San Quentin. Westerfield's death sentence remains in place. He is now age 72, and with the death penalty currently suspended in California, his execution seems unlikely. The leading cause of death on death row is natural causes. This is just the way that reality is coming to the prison system. The Department of Corrections says they try to notify victims before a death row inmate is transferred. I reached out to the victim's mother, Brenda Van Dam, but we did not get a response. Back to you in the studio. Well, after a taste of spring week this week, cooler temperatures back and so is the rain. Chief Meteorologist Carly Chavis is here early with what it's like out right now and what's coming. Cloudy right yeah. now coming showers so <laughs> yeah we're all kind of like eh, wet, <laughs> pretty much now we had some much warmer temperatures earlier this week we were even above seasonal and it was really nice out there you had 90s for the desert you had 80s inland areas but now we're backing away from that so yeah it's meh weather as carlo likes to say out there with the cloud cover that's going strong this is a view from our mount soledad camp the storm system is not here yet so we're still waiting on that and our chances start to go up when it comes to rain chances by this weekend especially once you're looking around the evening hours on Saturday. So we get into the afternoon and evening hours. We are looking at more favorable chances than everything tapering off at night. So let's go ahead and set the clock in motion. So you are seeing an influx of moisture and that's around six 
uh, 10 for tomorrow night. Uh, Santee impacting Ramona as well as across the mountains and then also seeing more shower activity from Chula Vista all the way to Santee and Ramona by 905 tomorrow night and some light activity across the mountains and everything starts to clear out. We pretty quiet in the morning hours with some cloud cover that'll be around and then we get another influx of moisture and that will be by Sunday afternoon. So afternoon and evening hours. Those are going to be key with this storm system this weekend, but we're talking about light rainfall, so we'll get to those totals coming up. Kirsten. Thank you for that. Carleen. Tomorrow, friends and family of a 16-year-old killed in a wrong way crash earlier this week will hold a vigil to remember his life. Thomas Ryder Shoup, also known as Ryder Day, was driving southbound on I-5 early Wednesday morning. That's when CHP says a 67-year-old woman driving the wrong way crashed into him. Ryder was a 10th grader at Mar Vista High School, and he leaves behind a four month old child and a girlfriend. That's their picture. The candlelight vigil will start tomorrow at five o'clock at the Imperial Beach Skate Park. CHP is still investigating if alcohol or drugs were a factor in this crash. Construction of a new multifamily housing unit in the middle of a residential neighborhood has homeowners concerned. CBS 8 has been covering the push and pull over accessory dwelling units or ADUs, which City of San Diego leaders have portrayed as a way to provide more affordable housing. CBS 8's Abby Black is working for you to share all sides of this story. When this green fence went up, curious neighbors in Mira Mesa wondered what was going on. They learned that there'll be three two-story ADUs built in the backyard. They wondered, how is this legal? but it is. I spoke to the developer who says it's a critical need to address the housing crisis. ADUs, formerly called accessory dwelling units, are popping up in backyards across San Diego. What I'm wondering how the government will approve this type of construction in this kind of uh, residential area. When CBS 8 saw concerns on Facebook about plans for an ADU project on Ivory Coast Drive in Mira Mesa, we got to work and found city permits issued for three two-story ADUs in this backyard along with additional units in the existing home. Well, my privacy is gone, totally. We spoke to the developer for the Mira Mesa project. Now, you might recognize him. CBS 8 has talked to Daniel Skolnick before about several of his ADU projects in the College East area. He says to address the housing shortage, neighborhoods need to evolve. They bought their home, not the neighborhood. And so things are going to evolve. Zoning is going to evolve. Skolnick is doing nothing illegal. He's taking advantage of the city's ADU bonus program in transit areas. So that provides housing instead of for one family, it provides housing for six to ten families. And so that is really moving the needle in terms of affordability and housing in this city. Before the city's new rule in 2021, there were few deed restricted ADUs. And as of today, the city's issued 151 ADU permit applications in the last month. Neighbors for a better San Diego argue this is turning into a city of renters and squeezing out potential homeowners. Every property that's bought and turned into a multi-unit ADU, a de facto apartment building, is now one less home we have for sale in San Diego, and, and we're not adding to our for sale housing stock in San Diego. But our time to act, a youth nonprofit that advocates for ADU says multifamily housing is the future. We have to build more accessory dwelling units because they have a proven benefit of lowering the rental rates and youth need a place to live here in San Diego or we're going to lose the incredible talent that was brought in to San Diego. But long term homeowners feel like they're losing their neighborhood. It's very uh, discouraging. Working for you, Abby Black, CBS 8. Thanks, Abby. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria announced today how he wants to spend the city's money next fiscal year. His $5.6 billion budget includes $26 million for the homelessness crisis and $85 million on stormwater infrastructure. He also wants to spend more on road repair in hopes of paving 75 miles in the next year rather than a projected 60. Meanwhile, the city is facing a $136 million budget shortfall. Mayor Gloria says he hopes his proposed one cent sales tax increase will bring in new revenue if passed in the November election. Music lovers are in the desert tonight for this year's Coachella Music Festival. The first weekend of the festival kicked off today. It runs the next two weekends. Dozens of artists are set to perform, including headliners Lana Del Rey, Tyler the Creator, Doja Cat, and No Doubt. This weekend's already sold out, but tickets are available for next weekend, weekend two. General admission costs $500.
Oh, another big show we got to tell you about one night only. Sting and Billy Joel are playing live tomorrow night downtown at Petco Park. Now, if you're looking for tickets, you're out of luck because that show is sold out. But if you're one of the thousands of people who actually have tickets, we went to work for you to figure out everything you need to know ahead of tomorrow's big show. What's the matter with the car? We've been waiting a really long time to see this. Um, we originally bought tickets um, to see his Florida show, um, and then a week later we saw it was here in San Diego, so we sold those tickets and we're here today. Debbie and Rick Weber came from Paso Robles to San Diego for Billy Joel and Sting's big concert. Two of music's biggest legends are taking over downtown San Diego for one night only tomorrow night. For out-of-towners like Debbie and Rick, what are their biggest hurdles to navigating busy downtown? Not too much. Everything yeah. is walkable. Everything yeah. is, is definitely walkable, and it's good for us, too. <laughs> yeah. Get our steps in. Everything Everything's within reach. It's, it's a great place to be. Only fly in their ointment, the weather. Knowing it's tomorrow night now, we're going to go get ponchos. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a hoodie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Billy Joel, of course, old school. Our generation music, super excited. Um, even though it's a little gloomy out there right now. Juan Carlos runs our place right across the street from Petco Park. For him, the gloomy weather is a win. Fortunately, uh, it means that's going to be more business because everybody wants to come inside. But if you're worried about parking downtown, don't worry, we got you covered. We're kind of lucky. We have a parking garage right across the street from us. There's another one on 11th and J, which is the Padre parking lot. And right behind us on 11th Street. Take a look at this map. All of these parking lots are available, but Petco says it's best to buy parking before the show because day of, it might get a little dicey and expensive. I'm thinking an average of $50. Other tips from downtown dwellers? Personally, if I run into some traffic, I park east a little bit, maybe two or three blocks, not bad, and then walk over towards uh, Petco Park. Or if you want to save money and avoid the traffic headaches. Don't even try to park downtown. I would definitely try to park in Little Italy or, well, actually not even that, maybe Old Town, just catch a trolley around here. Gates open at 5.30 and the show starts at 7. Here's a list of everything else you need to know. But the biggest tip is Petco Park is a cashless venue, so don't say we didn't warn you. Another good rule of thumb to remember when coming downtown? You just can't park in front. You'll get towed. But otherwise, there's plenty of parking. Okay, so tens of thousands of people are expected to come out to Petco Park for that big show. Again, one night only. Another good tip? Petco is recommending everyone just ditch their cars and take the trolley. But if you are driving, pack some patience. I know a lot of this is a lot of information all at once. So for a full list of the rules and maps and everything you need to know before you head out to the big show, go to our website, CBS8.com, and just click on this story. A lot of people going to that show. Oh, it's going to be fun. Still ahead tonight. Spring break is barely over, but now some families are facing the high cost of summer camp. Yeah, plus construction resumes on what's expected to be the world's biggest wildlife freeway crossing right here in Southern California. And up next, where the money goes when you pay extra for those specialty license plates.